Greetings, Lambearer, and welcome to my breakdown of Lords of the Fallen. This is an awesome looking game that's going to be launching on 13th of October, and something that I've been excited about for a while now. And with everybody else playing the game and not me, I decided I would go over a ton of the stuff that I've seen. I have unfortunately spoilt myself, and we are going to go over the mechanics that I think everybody needs to know before going into this game. This will make your first hours within Laws of the Fallen much nicer, so you don't get so lost. Because I obviously don't exactly have tons of footage of my own, I may well represent some of my points with footage from other games, as this game seems to carry quite a lot of mechanics that we'll be familiar with, but they are pretty diverse in where they come from. And that's not to say that Lords of the Fallen doesn't have its own unique mechanics with its umbral system and the lantern, but I just feel like it's easier to represent some of the mechanics in this way. With all of that said, here are the things that I think you need to know before you start playing Lords of the Fallen. Okay, so let's start with one of the more unique mechanics. Lords of the Fallen has two settings for the worlds you're traveling through it. There's kind of like the light side and the dark side, so the umbral side and the radiant side. And generally speaking, you're probably going to be in the radiant side, you're going to be in the land of the living. But if you are defeated, you will be transported to this umbral side where everything is basically more dangerous. Kind of works like a second chance, but we also get a, a reward multiplier in here. So the game's currency, you'll actually be able to get it faster in here. So if you want to level up faster, maybe you can spend some time in there and just, you know, bomb up some enemies. You are also able to peer into this umbral world using the game's lantern, which allows you to solve some pretty interesting puzzles. Early on in the game, you're going to come across a flower on a doorway, and you will need to follow it along the way so that you can obviously continue through the game. Entering this uh, second world doesn't only occur when you die. You can choose to do it at any time with your lantern so that you can go into some interesting places. Oftentimes, like when you kind of see deep water, you can enter into the world of the Umbra and you'll be able to get on down there, find some secret loot. And whilst you're in here, enemies are going to be continually hunting you down. So just bear that in mind. And apparently they're supposed to get more and more difficult as time goes on. We have a similar ability to Neo, where we're going to be able to switch between weapon stances. And we're going to be able to switch mid-combat so that we can extend and change the way that some of the combos work within the game. Obviously, I haven't played around with this personally yet, so we'll have to see how that ends up feeling. Builds are going to have access to some form of ranged attack, which you can switch to seamlessly. This drains a resource, depending on which weapon or ranged attack it is you are using. If it's magic, it'll drain mana. If it is a physical attack, it will drain ammunition instead. And this includes throwables. You're going to have a similar mechanic to Lies of P, where when you are blocking and parrying to a lesser extent, some of the damage is going to penetrate as recoverable health in a similar way to Bloodborne, where basically you'll be able to attack to recover some of it. So bear that in mind if you are going to go in for a tanky playstyle. The Lords of the Fallen is also going to have a cheeky way to pause the game. It is going to include a photo mode. This was a pretty cool trick that I used to use in Demon's Souls. So I wonder if we'll get some pretty good use out of that as we are making our way through. So in this game, we're going to require a charged heavy attack. I think this is probably for the best, as this will avoid us being able to circle around and grab cheeky backstabs. I feel like this was something that was a bit naughty in Lies of the P. I did it quite a lot in Lies of the P. So just make sure if you are aiming to get rear attacks and you want to get some critical strikes on enemies that you are getting behind them, doing the charged heavy so that you can put them into a vulnerable state. Speaking of critical style attacks, parries in this game do exist and it looks like on standard enemies a single parry should be enough to put them into a repostable state. However, bosses are not going to be quite as vulnerable and if you want to use the same strategy, you will need to get multiple parries. I guess this is somewhat close to what we had in Sekiro. They're going to have like a posture gauge. You'll be able to see it on the enemy when you're locked on. It's going to work its way down. And then once you parry them, I believe you can kick them as well to put them into a vulnerable state. You will then be able to go on in and get the critical strike. We're going to get the opportunity to construct our own checkpoints in Lords of the Fallen. I believe I read somewhere and I can't find the article now that in New Game Plus, this is actually going to become a part of the challenge because you will get less pre-made checkpoints, meaning you'll have to actually build your own checkpoints as you go through the game. And I feel like this could actually be a pretty interesting thing. This actually makes me somewhat interested in New Game Plus. Usually I don't touch New Game Plus because I just don't want to go through the same game again. But the idea that you'd have to then suddenly construct and make your own network of checkpoints actually makes it feel kind of interesting. I wonder what other kind of little nuances and different things will be in the New Game Plus. That'll be yeah, a real cool thing to take a look at. And lastly, some items, and let's go with events, look like they're going to require us to have certain stat requirements. We can see on the 
Umbral scouring that I'll have a screenshot of on screen tells us that we need to increase our Inferno and Radiance to gain further insight of the item. I'll be interested to see just how much difference that can make between different playthroughs and different builds and stuff. Maybe having different access to different items, areas, or any other kind of secrets would be quite interesting in my opinion. So we'll have to see how that one goes. That brings me to the end of the things that have stood out to me. Let me know if I've missed anything that's itching in your in the back of your mind, and I'll hopefully see you all on launch day.